If we have a look at our Fractal Explorer currently, we can, we can zoom in. However, the only issue we have is that there's no depth perception. We don't know where we are exactly in the Fractal, or how deep. And we're going to change that in the make color method. So if you remember, we pass in as a parameter the, the number of iterations we did on that specific point, and then convert that into a color. But that color we're returning is being stored as an integer. Now you might be wondering why a color is an integer. To understand this, we need to go back to when we first created our fractal image. In the type of fractal image, we said buffered image dot type int RGB or integer RGB, meaning we're storing values uh, of colors as integers. The next question is, so how is this done? If you have a simple RGB color, I mean, like this, each of these components can be stored with values ranging from 0 to 255 as such. But we know that an integer is usually stored with 32 bits. So that would be like this. We can use this to our advantage because we know that with 8 bits we can store all the values from 0 to 255. So we actually only need the first three the first three bytes. So we can store an integer, I mean a color in three bytes. So for example, this is the value zero. However, this would be the value four and this would be the value 5. And if they're all 1's, so like this, then we have the value 255. So let's change that back to how it was. So now that we understand how colors are being stored as integers, we can use that fact to our advantage when creating color given an integer counter. There's no right way to do this, and I, I would encourage you to be as creative as possible. But my approach will, will be to have a color, so to choose a random color um, that spans all of the red and green and blue spectrum so maybe a little bit of green, a little bit of red, a little bit of blue. And then have a mask that goes over, over top of that, that changes those, those bit values depending on the magnitude of iter count. Let me show you how to do that. So first we're going to need a color. So Here's the color I chose. It doesn't actually matter which color you choose, but I would recommend something that has a bit of red, a bit of green, and some blue. And next we're going to choose a mask. Something that we're going to, to be shifting and ordering with our color. Make sure these values have 0b in front of them, meaning we're defining uh, a binary number. But these are really just uh, random integers, so maybe maybe this one would be something like like this, or and this one would be a bit smaller because 
the the biggest one only starts around 10, so uh, maybe, I don't know, something around that range, probably a bit bigger. Um, but do remember that these are simply integers, thus their type also. So the reason I chose the mask to be this value, and especially the fact that it has a bunch of zeros at the end, is because we're going to be shifting it to the left. And we're going to be doing a comparison, or rather, oring, oring the bits together so that it's going to produce a new color each time depending on the shift of the mask, or in fact, the depth. So I'm going to define the the shift magnitude as iter count divided by 13. Um, 13 because that's the number of zeros I think I have. I'm not going to count them. Um, but essentially there's going to be 13 different shifts possible. So if we say mask shifted by 1, then that would be this value, um, but shifted by one, so you would add a zero, remove a one. If we have mask shifted by two, then remove a zero, but add a zero at the end. Um, so every time we're doing a different shift operation, we're losing a zero and adding it at the front of the number. So what this does is when we actually or this with this this color up here, we're going to get a different color for each depth, or de depending on where the shift magnitude is. What I mean by oring is if we're oring the numbers, say this and that, well, we look at the, the two values on top of each other. If it contains a one then we put a 1 at the bottom. If it can, if they're both 0, then it's 0. So they're both 0. All right, 0 or 1 is 1. 1 or 0 is 1. 1 or 0 is 1. So these two or together would give that. So we're going to be oring uh, the mask with the color. So let's get rid of this and do that. So it's going to be the color, or with, so this single pipe is binary or, and we're going to say mask shifted by whatever the shift magnitude is. And that's it. So let's run this and see what colors we get. And wow, as you can see, we already have something stunning. A purple background and and a thick outline for our fractal. As we zoom in, the colors are changing. Gorgeous, aren't they? And as you zoom into the fractal, maybe you're going to see some colors get repeated. And the reason is, occasionally the shift will not have any effect because perhaps a shift of 2 and a shift of 7 will result in the, the OR operation giving um, the same thing. So instead of ORing, you might try XORing or, or ANDing or some other binary operation you might want, but I'm going to stick with the OR for now. And that's how I plan on viewing the depth in our fractals by changing color. But feel free to make any, any make color method you choose fit. So guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.